Hey, Southside family, this is Dwayne Hamby, and we are here on another Friday night uh, for Celebrating Good News. And uh, ever since we have been doing this little show on Friday nights, I've been thinking about uh, trying to share some of the stories with you that I have seen and I've come across uh, over the past few years. And one of the most amazing stories I came across two years ago uh, was meeting uh, a couple of friends in Winnipeg uh, on the set of the movie Breakthrough. And I know uh, you all went to see that movie last year. You rented it out, did an outreach opportunity. Um, we were there on the set uh, a year before it came out. And I was there when uh, the real life people behind the Breakthrough story were there visiting. Uh, it was their first chance to see what was happening and it was our first chance too. And uh, so I'm so glad that I have Joyce Smith and John Smith here today. This is uh, the mother and son. Uh, from the Breakthrough Story. The, the movie Breakthrough is based on Joyce's book, uh, The Impossible. And uh, thank you so much, Joyce. Uh, I know our people are gonna be uh, so thrilled to hear from you and John. Um, so thanks for being here. Well, thank you, it's good to be here and glad to share the message. Yeah, it's been a whirlwind couple of years since we met yes. uh, on the set of that movie. But even before that, let's back up and and talk about uh, what happened that day before anybody knew the story. It was ordinary people going through uh, an or what would have been an ordinary day, right? And and John, you want to talk about what you were doing and, and what happened, and then we can pick up with uh, Joyce. Uh, so I mean, so basically at the time, you know, I was very big into the game of basketball. Um, I was captain of my eighth grade middle school team, um, and we had uh, we had a very busy schedule, a lot of games and. The week of Martin Luther King um, Jr. Day was just happened to be one of the busiest weekends we had. We had about four games that weekend um, and we weren't doing too well, but we we won the last game and we decided to celebrate at one of the Josh's um, house um, houses. So we went to his house and, you know, we were having a good time playing video games, you know, eating pizza, you know, just doing normal things. And, and we got bored. I don't know how you get bored, but we got bored. And so we decided that we were going to go to the local park, which is probably about two blocks up from there. Um, and we noticed that they had a merry-go-round and, you know, we were having fun just doing stupid things. And so we noticed that the lake had frozen over and in Missouri, that doesn't happen too much. And so, you know, we did the best that we could to test it. You know, we used our body weight, we used rocks, you know, we, we tried to see how safe um, it was until I don't remember who, but one of us stood up on the ice. And, you know, we were just having a good time. And that's where the photo at the end of the movie, a breakthrough was taken. The next day was, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, and we went back out on the ice. But the difference between the day before and this day was we brought Josh Rieger's older sister, Jamie, with us. Um, she didn't want to go on the ice, which I don't really blame her looking back on it. Um, and, you know, I had got a phone call from my mom, you know, wanting to know when she was going to pick me up, when I was going to go play. Uh, basketball, train, weightlift, that sort of thing. She said, I love you. I said, I love you too. Um, eight seconds later, all three of us fell through the ice. Uh, me and my friend were 25 to 50 feet out from shore. My other friend was close to the dock, able to self-rescue, but was trying to get back on the ice to save us. Jamie was on the dock calling 911. Um, you know, it, and, and then eventually I had drowned. Um, I was presumed dead for over an hour and eight minutes. Um, and then they brought my mom in later and she prayed and I came back to life. And Joyce, when you got the call, you went straight to the hospital. Uh, and, and tell me a little bit about that. What happened, uh, what they told you when they brought you in to see John. Well, they let me come in to the room and they had, weren't telling me at that point in time what they were doing, but they told me I could go up and talk to John and I could see that, you know, none of the monitors were showing any life signs at all. And so, I had been praying before I came into the room. There was a sweet little nun. Her name was Sister Donna, we found out later, um, who had been in there praying with me. And she'd walked into the room with me. And there's just such an awesome peace when she started praying with me. And I just had an assurance that God was going to take care of things. I didn't know how, but I knew, I just felt that. And so when I walked into the room, the charge nurse, Alex Gidden, who was there that day, um, she said, when I walked in the room, there was something else that walked in the room with me. And she said it was so powerful that it not only changed the atmosphere of the room, but it changed the temperature of the room. 
And so she said, when I walked up to John and started praying for him, which I just cried out, you know, Holy Spirit, please bring me back my son. She said something so powerful moved up his, her, uh, up John's body that she and the young man who was doing CPR on him could hardly hold their place there standing with John. And it just immediately, it wasn't minutes later, later or days later, immediately John's heart started beating. And so, you know, God prepares us for times, especially when he's going to be showing, showing up and showing off, as I say. I had been doing a Bible study called uh, Believing God with Beth Moore. And in the morning, you would uh, repeat these things when you were doing your, your work for the day. And it said, I believe God is who he says he is. I believe God can do what he says he can do. And I'm believing God. And it was there that moment that I was going to either have to stand on the things that I had learned or not. And I just thought to myself, God, you're either who you say you are or you're not. And that's, you know, just that was the moment of truth where the rubber meets the road. And God had just done miraculous things. He had assembled about 25 people there in that room that were professionals from respiratory therapy to the, um, uh, pick you uh, or, or to the um, pediatricians that were head of the hospital there we were all in the room. They had done everything they could possibly do and nothing was happening. It was like God said, okay, you do everything that you can do, but then you step back and watch right. what I can do. And that's yeah. what he did. Joyce, one of the things as you're talking that, that really strikes me is is the fact that you were kind of, you were immersed in the word before this even happened. Yes. And this was an ordinary day. And a lot of times we think we turn to the word when we're going through a hard time. But you didn't know you were going through a hard time. You already had it in your heart. So it just kind of bubbled up from there. And I think that's a great lesson for people to know that don't just run, you know, don't just immerse yourself in the word when it's when trouble comes. God is preparing you for something at all yes. times, even like what we're going through now, the whole country is going through now. We would have never expected something like this to happen. Yep. Uh, nobody, you know, you watch shows. If you watched a TV show about people who predicted this, you would say they're crazy. You know, it's not going to happen. And here we are in, in lockdown, so to speak. But I think that's one of the lessons I think this, that can come out of your story is to always be, you know, meditating on the word and always have that relationship. So no matter what comes, then, then God, the Holy Spirit brings that back and, and, and gives you that faith that you need for a situation you didn't know that you needed it for. Yes, absolutely. It comes down to people say, well, you have tons of faith. Well, Bible says we only need the faith of a mustard seed. Right. what God does want us to do is to trust him. Yeah. And I think those go hand in hand when you're asking God for something uh, and you have faith, do you trust him? Yeah. It's just, it's a twofold thing. You have to trust God that he is going to do the thing that you're going to ask him. And here's one of the things and I, you had mentioned this when we pray, we don't always get things the way we want them. Okay. Right. But this is one of the things, and we share this with people all around. I have people come up to our table all the time. And they'll say, well, I prayed and I had faith, but my child died or my father, you know, whatever family member, and God didn't answer my prayer. Well, yes, he did. He did answer your prayer, just not in the way you ask him to. Because when, if people are Christians, when you pray for them, when they cross over to the other side, they're healed for eternity. We're not we're not promised tomorrow. Everyone is going to die one of these days. If the Lord doesn't come and take us back, we're going to die. Right. John's going to die. I'm going to die. Where do you stand with Jesus Christ? And I think that's the, the question we need to be asking people right now. Where do you stand with Jesus Christ? Is he your Lord and Savior? Because when you do cross over to the other side, you are healed for eternity. That's God's promise. Right, right. John, I'm, uh, in the times that we've talked, I've always been uh, impressed with you. You seem like you're a teenager, but you seem very well grounded and mature. I'm sure you 
blow off steam or whatever, but uh, are you still stuttering, uh, studying, studying for uh, the ministry? Are you still uh, on that track? Uh, yeah, so I'm up at uh, North Central University, Minneapolis. Uh, well, I'm home now, but I was up there. Um, but I am studying to become a pastor with a, a minor in business. During all this, uh, the attention uh, focused on you, John, was there ever a time where you just kind of wanted to step back? Or have you felt like this is a, uh, a message that God's given you and that you're, you, know, you're, you just want to be faithful and inspire people with it? Um, I mean, there's always a time where, you know, having the spotlight, having everybody know who you are, you kind of just want to be a kid again at, at some stages. I didn't get the traditional high school experience due to, you know, me traveling, due to breakthrough, due to the, the book, the movie, all of the above. Um, and, you know, it, there were hard times, but, you know, God has definitely been preparing me for this, this journey, you know, from the beginning. Um, you know, the leaders that he's been putting in my life, the people that I've gotten to meet. Um, but I mean, now, you know, I just try to remember, you know, that, that in the time of crisis, you know, there, there, there is story of, there are stories of hope out there. You know, there is breakthrough. I, I, during this quarantine, I've had so many people, you know, follow me and reach out and ask questions, you know, due to Easter, due to everything going on. So anything I can do, I try my best to help. And I saw you've got, uh, you know, just on Facebook the other day, I think, Joyce, you shared some memories of of John being at the basketball game uh, with Steph Curry and all that and all the stars of the movie. I mean, that's, that's uh, amazing memories. And so when the movie, when the movie came up, um, I know, I know a little bit about this. You first touched base with Sam Rodriguez, right? Because I think he was telling your story on TV or a sermon or something. And then you were talking about it on TV. Yes. Yeah, and then you touched base with him, and that's what got the ball rolling. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, my brother-in-law called me up, and he said, do you know who Samuel Rodriguez is? And I said, yes. He goes, well, you need to get a hold of him and tell him the whole story, and because he's only touching on a little bit of it. And I thought, well, I don't know how to get a hold of Sam Rodriguez. So <laughs> I looked up a Facebook and sure enough found him, sent him a note, thinking I'd never hear back from him. But the very next day, he sent me back a message. He said, yes, I want to know the whole story. And um, would you like to be on TBN? And I said, I'll shout this from the mountaintop, yes. And so it took us about a year to put this all together to where his schedule, our schedules came together. And so we went out there to Orange County to TBN. And there was a young gentleman that walked out in the parking lot that day. And we thought he was a green room host. In fact, it's a big joke between us now, <laughs> but um, he took us in, talked to us, offered us sandwiches and drinks. We told him our story, and after we, after about 45 minutes, he goes, I don't know if you know who I am or not, but I'm Devon Franklin, and I just produced the movie Miracles from Heaven. I about fell out of my chair. I mean, how God took these things right. and put them together has been amazing, so we still tease uh, Devon about I'm so glad that God promoted him to a movie producer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's amazing and Devon is a, a great guy. I yes. mean, I'm so glad that he ran with your story and and let everybody uh, experience it and it's inspired so many people. I was I think we were all in the same room when they showed that they had just put together the first trailer for the movie. Uh, and we were back there waiting, I think, to go to dinner or something. Mm -hmm. And they said, we're going to show this trailer. And I think it's the first time you had seen Chrissy yes. uh, act and, and put her hands on the feet, you know, and pray. And, uh, I, you know, I saw you tear up because I can just imagine how surreal that would be to see that. And uh, when you watch the movie, I'm sure both of you would, how did it affect you when you, when you watched the full thing? Uh, I mean, for me, it was, uh, you know, at first when I watched the full film, they flew us out to Los Angeles to, to view it in a little private theater um, on, on, the, on the 20th Century Fox um, lot. Um, you know, for me, there were a lot of emotions going on in my mind. You know, is it going to be accurate? What, what's it going to be like? This sort of thing. And I mean, at first, I didn't like it. I mean, I was not a fan. Um, and it wasn't because of anything of the acting or that. I just... I, I knew all of the little nitpicky things that was going on and some of the things they left out that I wasn't, you know, I just, I didn't understand. 
But by the second and third time that I watched the film, I saw that the, I saw what Devon and Roxanne were doing and how powerful and moving it was. Um, and I, and watching Marcel act and portray me, he did perfect. Um, he, he went, he expressed everything that I was going through, you know, down to every little detail. He, he was very, very honest and very, you know, hardworking to play me. And I was honored to have him fit the role. And the same for me with Chrissy. Oh my goodness. When the first time I saw the sizzle reel, they didn't have her picture on there. And as they just had her speaking in the background. And I thought, oh my goodness, when did I do that voiceover? I don't remember doing that voiceover. And all of a sudden I realized it's Chrissy. I mean, she, she did it spot on. And she is an awesome, awesome girl. I, I couldn't have been more pleased with, you know, at first they asked me who I wanted to play me. And I told them I wanted Medea to play me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At which time I told uh, Kirk Franklin that down one day at the Dove Awards that I wanted, who I wanted to play. And Devon Franklin was shaking his head because he knew what I was getting ready to say. And Kirk Franklin started laughing. He said, yeah, he said, if Medea had played you, there'd been guns and cussing going on. In the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Chrissy did an absolute spot on job. I mean, and yeah. she is an amazing, amazing person. Yeah, she's so sweet. And, you know, I was really thrilled that uh, she, that the film got the Oscar nomination for the song because yes. that is just amazing for, especially for a movie with this much faith content. Uh, and not just faith content, this is, you know, this is the Holy Spirit movie you know it's not just i mean this is uh this is praying in the spirit uh so it was it was pretty exciting to see that and all the i was rooting for her to get the best song too yes you know? that would have been amazing but i mean pretty much now breakthrough is an oscar nominated film you know it can add it to its repertoire you know you know that's one of the things and i don't know if people realize this disney does not do faith-based movies at all. And I think it's just one more thing, layer of miracles that God has laid on this movie. They inherited the movie from 20th Century Fox when they bought it. So of not wanting to do that, they ended up with a movie that starred Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you know yeah, that's God. right. <laughs> Whether that's they right. wanted it or not. And out of all of the movies that they inherited, I think there were eight movies they inherited from 20th Century Fox when they bought it. Breakthrough is the only one that made them money. Oh, wow. Wow. That's great. I know when we were there, everybody believed in it because they actually said, some of the, uh, you know, like the president at the time of uh, Fox 2000 Elizabeth. Uh, was there. Yeah, Elizabeth was there. Mm -hmm. And some other, you know, higher ups were there. And they said they want to talk to the press. And the, pub, you know, the publicity, publicity team were surprised because they're like, that doesn't really happen. But to me, what it showed is that everybody believed in that movie and everybody believed in that story. So it was pretty exciting. I think it's interesting too when uh, Disney came in and it was if if the timing on this I mean this movie made it in right under the wire how God just worked that in wow. and uh, it was one of the movies that Disney had to run and so but afterwards when they came in the week before they fired Elizabeth and her whole team and how God just came in and took care of them and they you know, when she sent me a note saying, you know, they'd been let go, I was like, you know, hang on, God's going to take care of this. And sure enough, Sony picked up Elizabeth and her whole team. So, you know, oh, great. even when God, when God is in control of things and he's got his hand on things, Satan can come in and do whatever he wants to, to try to, you know, make it fail. But God always has the final word on it. And I just, you know, we see that time and time again where breakthrough has been, you know, God has just come in and taken care of things. Yeah. Well, if you have any kind of, uh, you know, our people, like everyone you know, uh, we're all sheltering in place. Mm -hmm. um, we have, uh, you know, a church here in Winter Garden. We're not far from Disney. If you ever come to Disney, holler at us because... Okay. We could, if the fireworks were going, we could see them in our backyard. So, <laughs> okay. uh, but they've been silent for a while. But anyway, our church is special. We got a lot of special people in there. 
and we're trying to keep them uh, connected and we're talking to them a lot. So, uh, you know, what type of encouragement would you want to say to them? If you're standing in uh, our congregation and, and speaking to them, you can't see their faces, but they'll, they'll see you and they'll hear your heart. So if you have any word to share with them, either one of you. I mean, you know, it's a crazy time. I mean, you, you really can't, you can't go a day without hearing about it. I mean, to be honest, you know, you wake up, you check your phone, there's about 15, 20 notifications of what's going on with the coronavirus, what's going on with, you know, our president, what's going on with all, all of the above. You know, my encouragement is to simply put the phone away, you know, put the phone away, spend time with your family, you know, rather than reading the news of, of man, you know, read the word of God, um, really dig deep into that, really understand that because there, there comes a time and there comes a place when that's going to be more valuable than an article from CNN or Fox or, right. you know, any of these news medias. So my encouragement is, you know, put down your phone, take a break, you know, spend time with your family, put a puzzle together and, you know, just enjoy the time you have because this time is, is valuable and, you know, prepare your family, you know, definitely prepare your family for what's to come and, you know, what is going to happen here in the future because we, don't, we simply don't know. All we can, all we can really do is be ready in the word of Christ and be ready to stand for the Christians. Right. One of the things I always like to say when we go out to church is none of this takes God by surprise. He didn't wake up this morning and go, oh my goodness, I didn't see that coming. God already yeah. knew. He's a way maker. And even in the middle of this, God is still large and in charge. The situation and the circumstances do not throw him off. And he has got this all under his control. And this is a time to really be looking to Christ for his leading and for his guiding. And just to be honest, as far as I'm concerned, for his soon return. You know, are you ready? That's my question for the world right now. Are you ready? If Jesus would show up today, are you ready to go? And the other things are for all those families that are going through this. Our prayers are with you. And God loves you. That's, that's, that's the whole thing. God is the hope of the world. He came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And he will follow through on that because his promises are true. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. And uh, I know people are going to be blessed. I would encourage everyone to, uh, to pick up the Breakthrough book uh, written by Joyce and uh, it, it tells the whole story. If you love the movie, then you can immerse yourself in that. I mean, you've got, you can order it on Amazon. You don't have to get out. And you've got, you know, ha however long we're still in place to read it. So uh, it's a great thing. We appreciate you guys so much. And uh, we love you. It's been a pleasure getting to know you over the past few years. And and love your story. It's inspired me. I was I was just blown away the day that I, I came to Winnipeg, met you all. Uh, every part of it, I felt like. Uh, Devon spoke a word that ministered to me personally, and the story just was so uplifting. Uh, Joyce or John, either one, uh, would you just pray for our congregation, and then uh, and then we'll we'll end. Sure. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you that your great love is so miraculous. Lord, there is nothing that goes on in our life, Lord, that you aren't there to take care of and to walk us through. And we thank you for that. So, Lord, we're inviting you into our situation, into our circumstances right now. We ask that you would send your Holy Spirit, Lord, to strengthen us, to give us wisdom, to guide us, Lord, and protect us. Lord, I pray a hedge of protection around all those who are watching this, Lord, and for this church, Lord, that you would lead them and guide them and protect them. Lord, I pray Psalms 91 over them. Lord, that you would send your battalion of angels, Lord, to protect them. Lord, those are your promises because we are your children and we love you, Lord. Lord, if there's someone here tonight that doesn't know you, Lord, we ask that right now you would just put a tug in their heart, Lord Jesus, and you would draw them to you, Lord, and they would surrender their life to you. If they can't do anything better ever in their life, it will be the best choice they ever made. And so we pray all these things, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, we thank you for what you do for us and we, what you've given us because you are truly our source. In thy precious name, we ask all these things. Amen. Amen. We love you, Southside. Hope you've been blessed. 
We love you, John and Joyce, too. Uh, thank you for being with us today. Hope Our to pleasure. see you again soon. Okay, bye.